So, Peter, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Before we kind of like look back about the band um, almost 30 years now, I'll talk about like the latest single, Summer of Hate, which I really enjoy. It's a very uh, different sounding so, you know, song from you guys, a lot heavier, a lot meaner. Yeah. Um, and uh-huh. we'll talk about the video in a sec, but just talk about, you know, kind of the background of the song. Uh, it started because I was, um, you know, like everybody during the pandemic, watching a lot of anything. Uh, and one of the things that I, I watched was a documentary on the damned. Um, okay. And just was like, I want to do a song like, you know, uh, let's see. I, I don't know. Uh, neat, neat, neat. You know, anything. Yeah. Off the, it was mainly their first record that was just like, just super exciting. Um, just a little more high energy uh, with just cool riffs, and so yeah. So I came up with the the riff that 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 started Summer of Hate, and uh, I don't know that it sounds like the Damned or not. But that's what inspired it. Right. Okay. <laughs> Uh, li- uh, lyrically it's uh courtney was writing about just that summer uh, just a horrible yeah. summer in portland like 2020 right. was awful um just the the elections the riots the um uh the big fires that were going on so it was pretty miserable yeah. 
it wasn't a good time for anybody that summer. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And it seems like it's carrying on even years later now, unfortunately. Yeah, it's not not gone away yet. No, definitely not. But the, the video, you guys kind of embraced uh, AI, which is kind of all the rage now. And um, you know, let's talk about what uh, mm-hmm. what made you guys uh, kind of embrace it for the video. Uh, it was, honestly, it was just a, like, this is kind of the, the cheap way of us making videos these days is shooting ourselves performing on a green screen and then incorporating some sort of background. Yeah uh the initial idea that we had for that video was just not i don't know it just didn't it didn't work so uh somebody suggested letting ai loose on what we had shot uh i don't really know how that works i'm sure there were some keywords that were entered in and stuff but uh yeah that's what happened (laughs) yeah (laughs) right did you guys in back in even in the heyday like making videos? Do you find it helpful? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I love hate relationship. Like most yeah. of the business side of the right. music, um, it was fun until it was not fun, and then it was tedious. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they were like when we were on Capitol, they were maybe oh well, they were more fun and more tedious because they right. were bigger budget they took yeah. days and you know it's nuts yeah uh, it's kind of glamorous you get yeah. baby pampered a little bit right now the yeah <laughs> the budget for the videos did that come out of your like uh like earnings and stuff like that or no i think if i remember right the label paid half of that and the oh, other okay. half came out of record sales so, yeah right um so we wasted a lot of money. I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe not wasted because yeah. I mean, some of those videos got a lot of attention. Now, back in the heyday, were you guys smart enough to realize that anything that the label was paying for was coming out of your pocket? Oh, God, no. I mean, maybe smarter than some bands, but right. we were, uh, Courtney and I were a bit older. Um, I was like, what, 26 or 7, mm-hmm. could be 28, like that, when, when we got signed. Maybe, I, I don't know, somewhere in there. Yeah. Um, so we weren't complete idiots. Um, but, you know, it's like there's so much you just don't know. Yeah. And, you know, we had management that had never managed bands before. And, and luckily they got us a very good lawyer. And so at least That's we cool. had that on our side. Yeah. And it was, it was still like just, just, post grunge so the labels were like throwing lots of money at bands and giving right. them artistic you know control and stuff like yeah. that so right yeah so how is it now for, for you guys like being on like you know indie label and stuff like that and obviously you guys are older you know a little bit wiser i would hope uh yeah uh i mean we've just the the way the business has gone it's like we all have to do more more of it ourselves um for less right (laughs) uh, yeah uh i mean i do i do a a lot of the recording and and um yeah courtney does a bunch of business stuff zia does a bunch of the money stuff and we all do merch and take care of like just all the all the little details um yeah i would imagine you guys don't enjoy doing that you probably just want to focus on the music but it's kind of a necessary evil Uh, yeah i mean the recording side's fun until it's not fun right (laughs) yeah there's a lot of tedious stuff that yeah people just don't know right um but whatever it's allowed me to do my own records as well and help other help friends make records and right remixes and i all sorts of stuff so it's it's all worth it yeah, and you mentioned your own stuff. We can talk about that real quick. Uh, Peter International Airport, which you know, you you guys you had the song on on the on one of the early albums as well. How did that form, and uh, what's the biggest difference between the two?
It's, um, well, it's just started with a, a, an outlet for all my ideas that, uh, mu you know, musical song bits and pieces that Courtney wasn't interested in writing lyrics to. Um, and yeah, and now it's, now it's like, I follow whatever it's, whatever I want to do. Right. Yeah. Um, and I I get to work with all sorts of cool singers and other musicians like whoever whoever I want to who wants yeah. to work with me right um, and it's been amazing um, it's allowed me to grow uh, as as an artist um, uh, in ways that the just working with the dandies would not have yeah is it kind of a good outlet for just for doing your own thing or i mean is, is it like yeah yeah i mean did you feel that if you hadn't done that it would have been just kind of like you would have gone crazy just to keep doing the dandies uh i wouldn't have gone crazy just doing the dandies but it's like i would just wouldn't have been happy right um would have just been frustrated and probably would have I've been angry and taken my frustration and anger out on band members and that would right. have been good no <laughs> yeah right now, speaking of that i mean you guys are closing in on a 30 year anniversary you know next year how, how does like the dynamic of the band after all these years i mean how is it still uh function uh we're all pretty forgiving of uh each other's uh annoying habits right <laughs> um we know when somebody's just having a bad day and as opposed to you know just being an asshole yeah i guess so you know you can don't take things too seriously and and there's just a lot of leeway and yeah and it, it seems to be everybody does that and we all kind of make it work yeah right and with the the, the new single summer of hey is there an, uh, an album that's gonna come in it soon there is a, a full album that's been done for God, like nine months. We're just mm -hmm. finalizing some a deal uh, to, with an indie label to get it out there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not paying much attention to that side. Right. Um, that is not my forte. So yeah, it, it's it's frustrating waiting for sure. But right. it seems like the timing is going to be great. It's going to be you know on our anniversary sometime around then. So yeah. yeah. Right. And then obviously vinyl is making a great comeback now. It's more in the mainstream now than ever. Um, is that going to be uh, on vinyl as well? Of course. Everything has to be on vinyl. Of course. Like multiple different like color schemes. and Yeah. You know, it's ridiculous, but right. super fun. Yeah. As long as it's not on cassette, hopefully that never comes back. <laughs> uh, well, you never know. It's like, yeah. it seems like every once in a while cassettes pop up too yeah <laughs> i don't understand why but never never a fan of those <laughs> no yeah portability but mp3s yeah. are way more portable <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> right you can have yeah. you know, a million songs right on your phone it's it's good and bad you know i still yeah, i still like the sound sure. of the vinyl oh you know yeah it's also just the the search for music made everything you know you were a little more invested in it and mm -hmm. you gave it a little bit more time you know spending three seconds looking up a song yeah take that much right so 
Absolutely. And as well as like the album art and the liner notes and everything like that. It was just, it was a whole experience with, with vinyl. Sure. Yeah. yeah. G- going back, you know, uh, a couple of years, how, um, how important was uh, signing with Capitol? I know it was kind of a rocky, you know, relationship, so to speak, but how, how important was it for you guys? I think it was huge. Um, you know, we didn't really, I mean, understand what they did for us until we tried to do a record on our own um and then we just realized that the big machine isn't behind us and nobody even heard like so many people didn't even know we put a record out so at a bare minimum they were they were good at that um it's i don't know it would it would have it would not have been smooth a smooth relationship with any label um and i don't know they they did they did pretty good with us because i mean i know there are you know obviously a couple albums that were different you guys you know released um danny warhol's our sound after the whole uh, welcome to the monkey house and i, I like both versions i mean i don't know if, mm-hmm. uh, sure. if fans like pick one or the other i mean they're both they both you know sound different they both sound great um i kind of know you prefer the sound version compared to the monkey i i don't know that i don't know that i prefer either one um (laughs) to me it's like the the, once they're done they're for they're for everybody else they're not for me anymore the the experience of making the record was was what i get okay um and then playing the songs live um but yeah, I don't. I, I wouldn't say I prefer one over the other, but I'm. I do think Capital was right in getting somebody else to, you know, to to remix. Yeah. Or, yeah, not remix to do an alternate mix, I guess, okay. um, because some of those I don't think uh, we used to be friends would have been had the same impact. Yeah, as you know, the Monkey House sound one does so. Now, you, you mentioned that song, and obviously, everyone probably knows it from, you know, Veronica Mars and gave you guys another outlet. Was there anything that you didn't say no to, to getting a song out there? I am 
Um, I think I think the uh, the films and and advertisements and TV were very important for us, uh, um, especially in the United States. Um, actually, it doesn't no, worldwide. Um, but in the United States, we were not getting on the radio. We were right. not on MTV. Besides, you know, one song here and there. Um, so having the theme song to Ver- Veronica Mars was huge. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's otherwise nobody would have known, you know, and you know, there's the Vodafone advertisement in, in Europe and Australia and where, wherever else, um, uh, definitely like it helped in such a huge way. Because that song, Bohemian, was not was our first song in the UK to not go top forty when wow. it came out right. the first time, and then the advertisement came yeah. out and Parlophone re-released it and it went top five. it's just people hearing it yeah and i mean that's the hardest part about this this um this business especially now is getting getting your music heard right um so whatever way you manage to do it it's fine get it out yeah and if you get a paycheck as well perfect yeah exactly even better right (laughs) Yeah. yeah we did we did turn down a few things um but it was mainly because we didn't like whatever product they were selling. So it was, it was more an aesthetic thing over. Uh, well, well, yeah. What was your favorite placement of uh, Bohemia? Because it, it was pretty much everywhere. Yeah, uh, the favorite was probably was it flushed away. Oh that, yeah, that yeah. Movie. yeah, that was a good one. Because all of a sudden right. we had really young kids that were into us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was pretty great. So get them when they're young and impressionable. You guys, I know you guys worked uh, closely with, with David Bowie, and mm-hmm. uh, he uh, brought you on to open for his, I think, his final tour, right? Uh, yeah, final European tour, right. I believe. Um, yeah. Yeah. What, um, like, what was that experience like, and what did you, like, learn from him? Um, I... Um, I was very impe- impressed with sort of the, the professionalism of his band and how um, just what they brought to the, to the, the show every day. Um, and that's kind of when I started taking my uh, guitar playing a little more seriously. Okay. <laughs> um, I was very loose about things before that. And then I, I really like decided I needed to, to be a little bit more dedicated 
And so I, that that was a, a major effect on, on me. Just, I, you know, I watched, I took the opportunity to watch every sound check of his and every, every show. So um, I got to see quite a lot over that two month period. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, those guys, def- their, their dedication definitely like rubbed off on me. Because I know like, obviously all his music, every album is completely different. And um, it seems like you guys followed suit as well. All your albums have a different sound. Yeah, so that, I don't. I don't know that that was generally uh, like. I don't know if we thought about that. Right. Uh, it was just something that we did, um, yeah. and we all grew up listening to Bowie. So it's probably it's it, like organically. We can, we can credit credit it back to him for sure. Yeah. But it, I, I don't think it was an, an intentional thing. It was just that we just kept like going, well, we're not going to make the same record again. We're going to keep trying things. Yeah. Because whatever, whatever was interesting to us. Yeah. It seems like if people weren't influenced by the Beatles, it was Bowie. It was like one of yeah. the, you know, everyone had, you know, their band slash, you know, artists. And it seemed like it was one of those two. So they were like the greatest yeah. job creators in the arts. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, if if there was bands, every band that I liked was influenced by Bowie. So yeah. <laughs> it might not have been directly Bowie, but it was but Bowie, definitely, yeah. he was definitely there. Yeah, t- totally. Yeah. So how um how did the band form? Um, it started with me uh, getting Courtney to just teach me some of the songs that he was writing um he had, he was always the drummer in bands um but he was he was writing songs and um he had a few just sort of kicking around and yeah i got him to teach me them and then like i don't know a week later he got kicked out of the band he was in at that point and right off we went and just uh found found people that that were compatible um uh and it was very much we're doing something that uh you know we were trying to be uh i don't know more fun and and more more psychedelic than what was going on at the at that mm-hmm. time in portland you know it's the just post grunge kind of yeah. thing so were you like a fan of grunge at that point or no I, uh, you know, some like Nirvana was great. It's mm-hmm. like some of it was great, but, but overall, like, no, uh, uh-uh. it was, it was a bit too, I don't know. Uh, it wasn't sexy enough. Right. Um, wasn't, uh, it wasn't the kind of, it wasn't beautiful enough, you know, um, all the, all the music that I grew up listening to always had a, had a kind of dark beauty to it so mm-hmm. yeah so, like what kind of scene like music scene was portland that was that a full like grunge scene like early 90s or like what kind yeah absolutely yeah um uh but it was always a bit weirder than seattle or that was my view of it i yeah. don't, don't know what was really going on in seattle but um right but it was definitely like i don't know maybe a little more playful mm-hmm. there's always a bunch of characters doing weird poetry yeah, uh, right. performance art you know admits to the attempts at music right yeah. yeah i mean that's the the club that we played at was called the x-ray the first club we played at was called mm-hmm. the x-ray cafe and mm-hmm. um it was like it was just a crazy group of people like just coming together, you know, and doing whatever they wanted. Right. <laughs> yeah. In in whatever that was, there was just anything went, you know? Yeah. It was really cool. Yeah. Were you like drawing big crowds then or a couple oh, people? God, no. Like no. You know, we, four we or five started <laughs> Yeah, we started small. Yeah. Um one of the things that that somehow kind of uh kicked it off for us was there was this um this lounge like proper kind of lounge that opened 
called the uh the 1201 um and some friends of ours got asked to play it play at it and we they asked us to open for them and we're like okay a lounge so we're gonna play everything really slowed down and trippy right um so we did that and then at the their last song we just kind of we like kicked it up a notch and and had this you know, i think we played uh that song rave up um just just a two chord extended jam and it turned into a dance party and right. then from like that point on i think we uh we started getting a different crowd um and it started kicking off and i, I, I think we got signed to a, our indie deal like not long after that and yeah hmm. it all happened pretty right. pretty quick and yeah. pretty naturally right has the songwriting process process for you guys changed over the years or is it pretty much the same um i i mean for me it's like it's i don't know that it's changed i'm just maybe getting better at it and i'm more interested in um slightly more complex chord structures mm -hmm. arrangements um but it's probably generally the the same i don't know okay <laughs> it's, right. it's hard to say yeah um i i think there's such a distinct like dandies kind of sound uh that it doesn't matter what we try what we think we're doing different yeah. it kind of ends up similar um even though like you know the new the new song and the new the new record is all it's all started with riffs you know not not yeah. chords and, and melodies it started with guitar riff um and that was the new approach they all sound like dandy songs yeah. <laughs> right. they're just a little harder they've got a little a little something different but they're still dandy songs yeah so right is the entire album like the dam inspired or was it just uh, no, no no there's all sorts of other other inspiration okay some, you know some zeppelin and sabbath and yeah uh i did my best at a sort of pantera-esque okay kind of <laughs> guitar riff it doesn't sound like pantera because <laughs> i just can't yeah and then another thing sounds like took a maybe a more sly in the family stone direction even though okay. it started as a riff you know yeah yeah really all over the place right but still yeah yeah Right. Speaking of all over the place, um, what inspired you guys to cover uh, Gordon Life? What's the record that Ed Fitzgerald?
right? It's like Courtney Kim. I don't think I knew that song. Courtney right. Was like, you should do this. Yeah, I have no yeah. idea where that one came from. Right. Yeah. But it, it, his his ideas for cover songs are always like, what? Why? I don't yeah. get it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because you guys are on a couple uh, like tribute albums, you know, Love and Rockets yeah. and uh, The Cure. Were you, were you guys um, all fans of uh, those guys? Uh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, that's 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 definitely where my where I came from musically. Right. Um, Love and Rockets was like my favorite band. Yeah. Um, uh, I would have preferred to have done a different song than that that one, uh, but whatever. We went with that one, right? Um, but as far as the cure, that I mean, the, the primary amazing song. Um, yeah. There's about thirty different songs that I would have loved to have done, but right. like, if not more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, doing those are great. The Gang of Four one we did was amazing. Right. Uh, there's a Clash one coming at some point soon. Okay, cool. We'll do one for that, which is another another cool one. Yeah. And uh, we we just uh, just putting the finishing touches on a, a damned cover for oh, cool. the the B side of the Summer of Hate seven inch. Right. Or we will get out there eventually. Yeah. <laughs> And then, and then whatever Courtney just pulls out of his butt for you guys, right? <laughs> out of nowhere. <laughs> it, yeah, it's something. Sometimes it's like that. Um, sometimes there's a discussion. Yeah. All right. Cool. Has anything like been shot down? He, he brings up something. You guys like now nah, we're not feeling this one. Uh, no. Things sometimes have just fizzled out. Right. Like there's been. Um. There was. But there was something we were doing live for a bit. There was something he wanted he wanted to do. He was obsessed with, and it kind of went away. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So you guys collaboratively like make the set list for for your shows. We let Zia do that pretty much. Okay. Yeah, she's she's the she's the DJ of the group, <laughs> so right. um, she does have a good sense of how things flow yeah. um and it's just easier that way you know we'll we'll definitely ha- all throw in our two cents here and there yeah. but um but it's 98 percent her okay yeah what do you normally like request to get put in there um uh, there's no normal okay uh, it's just something feeling? that either something that we haven't done or 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 I'm a, I'm the one pushing for for new stuff. I get I get frustrated staying doing the same thing over and over again. Right. Um, uh, maybe a little quicker than everybody else. Um, okay. Yeah. So when you guys release an album, uh, how long after its release can you go back and like like listen to it? If if um, and at all, I when it comes out, I like I've already stopped listening to the current one. Like, okay. I, I don't, I won't listen to. I probably won't listen to it on purpose for. Right. Um, I don't know. Probably for a few years. Wow. Okay. I mean, it's it's unavoidable. Yeah. It's always there, so it's like things will pop up, and then there's like, oh, I have to learn how to play something, so I have to listen to it. But that that's different than just listening to it purely for enjoyment right yeah i know like bowie came to like portland right and hung out with you guys a few times uh he well he was you know he was on tour and, right uh he's he stopped by our studio um and yeah and and he's old i think he didn't come to that dinner but but his band did i know you guys weren't play a lot on the radio but do you remember where you were the first time you did hear you guys on the radio uh no i don't but yeah. it was probably it was probably portland probably just driving around yeah. maybe i don't know they didn't no probably not they didn't play us really it took years before they played us right um i know like the first stations were like in missouri and minneapolis i think that that were the, some of the first yeah yeah, it's funny which markets you know pick up certain songs 
but uh, everyone check out the summer of hate it's a fantastic single we'll look forward to the album and then celebrate thank you. the 30th anniversary next year and peter thank you so much yeah absolutely thank you and a special thanks to pete for joining me today can't wait for that new album to come out if you want to follow him on twitter he's at pete dx 11 the band's at the dandy warhols dandywarhols.com if you have a guest session you can hit me up on twitter at the first all one nine or like the page really my youth on facebook you can go to itunes Check out all the past episodes we've had, over 300 of them. And if you find one you like, please rate and review the show. You don't have iTunes? Not a problem. Show's on SoundCloud, Spotify, Podbean, Amazon Music, basically wherever you can find a podcast. A new episode comes out soon. Happy holidays, everybody. <laughs>